Hello, my artsy friends. My name is Brooke, and I'm the person behind BB Henry Art. You can call me Brooke or BB. Anything works for me. I am so excited to participate in Junk Journal January. This is the first time I'll be participating as one of the artists that are going to help you inspire and do one of the prompts. So my prompt for today is interactive, and I'm really excited to take a somewhat basic art journal. It is a handmade one, but it's one that I just made with found papers, vintage, and um, store-bought papers, a nice variety of more plain sort of papers. I When I made this journal, it was not specifically intended for junk journal January. It's kind of my anything goes journal. So if you're like me, you have lots of different current journals going. And I love to do it that way because it kind of helps me to sort by themes or maybe what supplies I'm working with. It can go by a wide variety. This journal is really anything goes. So when I made it, it was a lot of blank slates that could give me really a lot of room to play. So what we're going to do with the prompt of interactive, what I'm going to do is I was inspired to try to make the one spread cohesive and work and interact with the spreads around it. So it's not going to just be a standalone journal page. We're really going to make it interact with the pages that go around it. We'll see what works. We'll be playing along. And I always like to start out with a little bit of a plan, but then from there, I just let my imagination go. So We'll see if it works, and I'm so excited to take you along for the ride. Please comment below if this is your first time watching one of my videos. I would love to say hi to you, and let's get going. All right, junk journal friends, this is the journal that I will be working in. It's a pretty basic journal overall. Um, let me just show you one of the signatures that hasn't been worked in. Overall, it's very simple pages uh, that don't have a lot going on. Sure, there's text and there's um, different patterns, things like that, but overall, it's a pretty blank slate for me to work in. So that's the kind of journal that I started out with. So I flipped through my pages and came across one that I think would interact really well with the pages going on behind it. So this is going to be my main page here. But I have pages here that we can maybe do some peekaboos and have them really look good with the ones going on in the front and back. So this is going to be a little bit of an experimentation. So we'll just play along together and see what we can make work. All right, let's get started here. So it is okay to be uncertain at the beginning. I don't know exactly what my end product here is going to look like, but what I do know is I think I set myself up for success with the pages that I chose. So again, all these pages are pretty blank to start out with, but when I fold them back and look at one next to the other, they all really go together quite nicely. There's nothing jarring that I feel like I'm going to have to work around. And so those blank slates actually give me me a lot of freedom because there's nothing that I'm trying to avoid as I'm working. So I decided to speed up this video a little bit so that you guys can go along quicker with me in this ride, but just know that it did take me quite a while to get a good flow going, get a direction that I was comfortable with. When you're starting something new that you haven't quite done before, or maybe you're doing it in a different way, it's okay that it doesn't feel very comfy to start out with. In fact, I don't think that we can ever grow and get better and try new things unless we're a little bit willing to be okay with that uncomfortable feeling. So I started out with the black page that was there. It was just too plain. There's a lot of plain things going on here, and that's a good place to start, but it's not where I want things to be when they're finished. And so I added a stencil with some white gesso just to give it a little bit of pattern to get me going. 
I decided to stick with black and white for this spread. That's another thing that makes it easier for me when I'm going into maybe more uncertain territory. If you stick with a color scheme that is really comfortable for you and you don't have to second guess yourself, I think you can get so much dimension and layers going on when you're just using neutrals and black and white. It would also be so fun to splash some color in here as well. And I really love how this ended up turning out. So I know that I'll be doing more of this in the future and bringing that color in. So find what makes you comfortable and then go for it. So in order for these pages to start working together, what I did is I just started folding them a little bit and um, you kind of have to commit and see what works for you and see what's going to work for those individual pages. So I started with some diagonal folds. Um, I didn't end up liking the black diagonal fold with the one behind it. It was too similar and I want to have different angles and different things going on. And so even though the fold was already in the paper, that's okay. We're going to keep moving on. We're going to be doing a lot of different things by the time that this is done that you're not going to notice that there was a fold in the paper before. It's actually just going to add to all of the texture, I think. So I wanted to add a little bit of interest onto the pages behind it. So you can see as I'm building out these layers, you're just seeing more and more of those patterns. And since we're playing in this neutral color scheme, they're all going together really beautifully. Now I want to take that black page and sew it to the one that is behind it. So this is going to help in a couple different ways. Instead of having what ends up being six different pages that would normally be like three complete spreads, we're basically turning it into one big interactive spread. And once I get in the flow here, it was kind of hard for me to like stop myself from continuing to build out these layers. I didn't want things to be too much, but I think it just goes to prove that the possibilities are really endless when you start thinking um, about making your pages interact with one another. So I decided to pre-poke my holes with my awl. That makes it a lot easier when you're working with so many layers and um also, that tape that I used, that stripe tape, it's from Umwow Studios. It's one of my favorite tapes, but oh man, is it sticky, which is great if you're using it to like bind a book or different things. But when you're just using it as a decorative tape and you're trying to stitch through it, I would not recommend. But of course, I never let those things stop me. Um, but I did have a quite of a gunky needle there at the end. I poked my hole, holes in a zigzag pattern, just like you would um, sew on the sewing machine, a zigzag pattern. I decided to poke my holes in that fashion as well. I don't always plan out the holes that much, but I kind of knew what look I wanted to go for. And um, the sewing machine that I have that I use right next to my art table here only does straight stitches. And I just was honestly feeling too lazy to get up and go across the room to do a zigzag. And so I actually probably did more work in the end by hand, hand sewing it, but I like the bolder look that it gave me. So I'm dealing now with some of these fold overs, deciding what I want to permanently glue down, what I want to leave as pockets. You see, I left that open there as a little um, pocket or opening, a little sleeve, and I'm just leaving things open for future possibilities if I want to continue to add to this down the road. I went ahead and I folded that left side of the piece of paper um, vertically and that gives it, so it's, it is a full page on its own, but it creates an entirely different shape. And I think that's the key when we're wanting these pages to really interact with one another is we have to make them different sizes. And at the end, when you have that bird's eye view, just looking down at it, you can see all of those different layers poking out and um, really playing well with one another rather than rather than them being spreads just all on their own. So I took my X-Acto knife there and on that folded line, I cut a hole 
um, like a slit along that line. And my idea here is like a little pocket that I can have a tag sticking in and out of. Um, I think it just all comes from experimentation and the willingness to try something and be okay if it doesn't quite work out with what's in your mind. As I said, I had the idea at the beginning that I wanted these pages to interact, but really it was once I started getting going and I was brave enough to take that first step by stenciling on that first stencil and making that initial fold that it kind of gave my brain permission to try some new things and just see where I could take this. So I have this slit here and I know that I want to do a tag, but I also thought it would be fun to kind of embellish that slit a little bit so you can tell that there's actually a hole there. And I always love adding additional textures into my work as much as possible. And so I have this piece of fabric. I have several different fabrics and I'm going to actually put this into place so that it embellishes that little slit to where that tag will go. That fabric is being a little bit slippery and finicky, and so I decided to just uh, tape that down there. So that fold in the grid piece of paper, I plan to have it permanently folded, and so you're actually not going to see what's on the inside. I think I want to now take this to the sewing machine and do some stitch work over it, but before I do that, I'm deciding if it would be fun to add in some more collage layers here. Um, just adding in those little bits of interest that the longer you look at the page in the end, the more details that you see. And that's always one of my favorite things to think about is those small little details to see how they're constructed or to see how things were layered together. Um, all of that. So I did take that to the sewing machine. I just did straight stitches back and forth and I left that grid sheet open as I did it so that the slit, the pocket did not close. Um, now that that, um, that tag can fit right in there, I was originally going to just glue this flap closed completely, but in the end, I want it to be a functional pocket, and so I decided to just rip a little bit of that off, and now using some skinny artist tape, um, it's going to be the perfect little closure right there. It leaves that open as a functional pocket, and actually it leaves the top open as a pocket too, which is just another future possibility. If I want to come back later on and add something, in the end there's quite a bit going on on the page, so I'm not sure that it's actually needed, but it's fun to think about those things. Um, to leave yourself room for future opportunities. If you're one that likes to come back and work on your spreads more and continue to add different layers, that can be a fun thing to just leave yourself open to those. So I decided to back a little piece of a paper snippet roll that I have previously made with some fabric and I just sewed around the outside of that a couple times to give it a messy look. And those, that held the two layers together quite nicely. Now, instead of it just sticking out there, I like the way that that looks, but I thought it would be even more fun to add in some fabric elements. And so I went ahead and I punched a hole with my slot punch. Um, it didn't punch a hole that great and I didn't expect it to through the fabric, but since it was backed with paper on the other side, it was enough to have that um, cut through the papers. And then I just folded a long piece of fabric and then sewed that on back and forth a couple times and that creates a really fun tag, I think. Now I want to make sure since I'm doing so many different elements, so many different patterns and things going on that I want to have some repetitive elements going on. This will help with the overall cohesion of the spread. And even though there's a lot going on in the end, I just love the way that it looks because I think it all just goes together really well. And so that striped tape that I did on the right side, I did end up putting some on the left and I decided to glue that entire text, uh, book text, 
next page down onto the craft paper because I think the layers that it creates is really nice. Now for a bold kind of focal element going on, I did with some black gesso, some bold like dots here. And now with um, different pencils, I'm adding in fun, some fun scribbly marks. So I wanted this page not to just feel like it was structure. I wanted it to feel like it was artistic as well. So I love the structure. I love the construction going on of all of the different folded elements but I also wanted it to feel like an abstract art piece also. So I decided I needed to be bringing in that paint and those mixed media touches just like you normally would in your art journal or junk journal. And now I'm embellishing those black dots so that they stand out even more. Now I say this is a focal element, but only when you open up that grid um, half page there. So I think it's really fun that you open up that page, the grid, um, sheet of paper and you get this really bold three dot look here, but then you close it and it's like, it's hidden away. So yes, it's a focal point, but it's also like a super fun hidden item as well. And it's those small details, those hidden things that just really excite me in the art journaling process. Okay, so back on the right side of this spread, we sewed down that piece of paper, that black stenciled paper to what was behind it. Um, but I purposefully left it open. I didn't want to glue it down to the page because it left it open to be a pocket and we can add another fun tag in here. I think it's really fun how many different tags and elements I actually included on what I consider kind of like one big spread. Um, I know that we do fold the paper, turn the page a couple times here, but in the end I made it all so it goes cohesive together. And normally you would never really use more than one tag on your uh, spread. So I think it's really fun that I found ways to tuck in the tags without it feeling overwhelming. And it gave me some really fun opportunities to use like smaller scraps of paper and fabric bits and different things that I already had on hand. So I had just used a couple little scraps of craft paper and, um, taped them together to create this little tag. And with some tape and some glue. It worked out, I think. Now I want to add an embellishment coming out of the top, you know, like on the left hand tag, I added that fabric sticking out. Well, I don't want to do the exact same thing. I want to keep thinking of different ways that we can bring in those textual elements. So I'm taking a mini little paper clip here and with some, uh, just a small little piece of fabric, I'm ripping that, not having too much success there. Um, sometimes it's hard to rip when you only snip just a little bit. And I love those frayed edges. So I didn't want to just completely cut across the, the fabric. So I took that then to the sewing machine and just sewed back and forth really messy a couple times. And that's what attached it to the paper clip actually. So that paper clip is just going to live on top of that little tag. And it's a fun little element. It almost acts as like a little pull tab. Um, you wouldn't want to pull on it too hard because I didn't actually attach the paper clip permanently to that tag. But um, that kind of signals in your mind that it's actually meant to be pulled out. You could even go a step further. And I think like with words or like a stamp, put like a pull or um, signifying something that it actually is a tag that removes from the pocket if you wanted it to. Adding in a few little structural elements to make sure all those folds of paper are going to stay nice and secure where I want them to be. I love to think of ways that we can have structural and have it um, secure and sound, but also make it part of the decoration and part of the artistic elements as well. So that black artist tape is really fun because it creates like bold graphic uh, little elements. And of course, the mini staple are always adorable. 
I wasn't sure how much I was actually going to do on the music sheet page, but after I added more elements to the left hand side there where I did the black gesso and then the white correction pen, I decided I didn't want to just leave it blank. But at the same time, I don't need this to be the main thing that we're looking at. So I brought in a piece of patterned paper, a large grid, and it's kind of nice because that grid ties in nice to the white grid paper that's on the left hand side. So again, we're bringing in some of those patterns and some of those elements so that we have that cohesion throughout the whole thing. And I'm creating another pocket on here. So I could have done a lot of different things. I could have collaged, um, I could have done just like a whole art spread on there, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple. Um, but at the same time, I wanted it all to play really nicely with each other. I purposefully am leaving that folded uh, grid page off the side, and I'm not actually going to attach it on the back because I want to leave it open for whatever I do on the back side of that music sheet, whether it is that I end up um, gluing it down or just leaving it open. So I'm going to open up that pocket like I have it right now on the screen and when I sew that on the sewing machine I'm going to leave it open like that so that it doesn't actually technically close it on the back side that just leaves it open for the future of however I want to add things in so I'm going to add a little bit of fabric on to um, the right side before I sew that on and I think it just ties nicely with the textural element on the left as well. So it just is bringing in all of those nice elements. And I wanted to bring in more organic feeling like I did with the scribbles before. And so these are just with some scrap threads and I'm going to place them on top of that fabric bit as I go. And I love the look of how that turned out. Now, I really was going to be done after I sewed that on, but I decided, well, if there's a pocket, we should put something in it. And um, I want to put something in there like a tag or something like that. But in the end, I didn't want to cover the music page too much. I love how it pokes out when you close it all. So I have this piece of a security envelope that has that clear... Um, section that clear window of it and so I thought well could we make something simple out of that that you can actually still see through it but it's a little something in the pocket it's making use of that pocket so um, I think I had just used that as a piece of scratch paper or something in the past so I folded it to the correct size and had some scrap fabric and then I just sewed around that that tag there and just like that, we are all done. I know that was a lot that went into those pages, but I am so thrilled with the way they turned out. And I think they really fit with the prompt of interactive. It's what I set out and had the intention to do is have those pages really be cohesive and interact with one another. I hope that you guys got some new ideas and that you're inspired. I would love to see what you guys are creating so comment down below, tag me on social media, and I would love to connect with all of you. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.